Bomber or Cyberfunk probably has more style than your favorite game. It's heavily inspired by the Jet Set Radio franchise, grinding through rails and bombing walls while listening to the funkiest music. But is this game just a replica unable to distinguish itself from its predecessors? Or does it stand out on its own, bringing a brand new vibe to the fanbase? These games are few and far between. So join us here as we dive into Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. This is the video adaptation of our Bomb Rush Cyberfunk review over on our website. Click the link in the description to read the full review. The story starts with Fo, one of the best graffiti artists locked behind bars. He then gets rescued by Trice, the leader of the Bomb Rush crew. Upon realizing that he was rescuing Fo, they make a deal to take over New Amsterdam, the game's setting, after their escape. But this quickly goes south as the main antagonist of the game shows up and decapitates Fo, leaving only his body for Trice. With no other option, Trice attaches a cyber head to the headless body, creating our main protagonist, Red. The story then follows his journey to find his real head and learn about it past. To aid him in his journey are Trice and Belle, who both aim to become the top crew in all of New Amsterdam. Due to their circumstances, their goals align, and they become a close-knit crew working together to achieve their goals. Bomber Cyberfunk actually surprises you with a story that's way more profound and even a bit strange at times. You certainly wouldn't really anticipate someone's head getting decapitated in a game that looks like this. But even beyond the initial impression, the overall story is pretty good, with some jaw-dropping plot twists that seriously caught us off guard. There are five main boroughs in New Amsterdam, and these hubs are numerous graffiti markings made by the rival crew, and your objective is to bomb all of them. Thus the name Bomb Rush. It's addicting, and you can easily lose track of time filling the streets with your crew's graffiti. You can even get new graffiti patterns by completing certain puzzles or defeating rival crew members. Aside from the vandalism, Bomber Cyberfunk also offers an amazing movement system. For starters, you can choose between three, bikes, rollerblades, and skateboards. While they all function the same way, it's up to you on how you want to express yourself while traversing the streets as you grind on rails and wires, climb on poles, run on top of billboards, and even grinding on the rails while hanging upside down. The game also has a combo system, which you rack up by performing numerous tricks and chaining them. To make the movement system even more dynamic, the game provides a jetpack that allows you to go blazing fast across rails or reach places an average jump would ordinarily never reach. All the tools provided to you are used for one thing, to earn rep. All of your urban tricks and graffiti are done to increase your reputation and challenge the rival crew for control of the area, which, after defeating the rival crew, progresses the story and rewards you with a newer area that's basically a bigger playground than the previous one, allowing you to easily perform longer combos. The game offers a ton of customization options for you to collect and use. You can unlock more characters as you progress through the main campaign, such as Rave and Shine, for up to a staggering 20 different playable characters, plus two extra ones unlocked via purchasing the DLC. There are also hidden collectibles spread throughout the numerous hubs, like outfits, music, and skins for your bikes, skateboards, and rollerblades. While the gameplay loop is amazing, we can't say the same thing when it comes to combat. Although it does have fun mechanics such as allowing you to spray paint to momentarily phase your enemies and even vandalize them, the vast majority of the game's combat is a dull beat-em-up with a severe lack of moves and sound effects. You could also style your enemies by chaining combos, but there's not much point to it when the outcome doesn't actually change. Your enemies will still end up getting knocked out regardless of whether you beat them up with paint on their uniforms or not. While one could argue that combat isn't the point of a game like Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, the fact of the matter is that it's there. And it happens often because of the heat system. You can think of it as the equivalent of GTA's Wanted level, except it's only affected by you painting graffiti or resisting arrest. The heat won't disappear just by ignoring them, and they'll eventually resort to using stationary turrets, riot police, and even snipers to take you down. The only way to avoid this is to change your clothes. The heat system just becomes more of a chore that you have to deal with more often than you'd want to. Uh, uh, uh. 
Playing Bomber Cyberfunk is a treat for the senses, not only for its non-stop styling action but also for its visuals. The graphics, models, and overall theme of the game makes you feel like you're in a futuristic version of the 90s where people can have their entire heads replaced with robots. As with any 90s game, or at least any game that aims to look like one, the character models in Bomber Cyberfunk intentionally have very low polygon counts. In fact, their mouths don't move when they're talking at all, adding to the illusion of a vintage game in modern times. Bomber Cyberfunk Funk's world also scales up as you progress through each hub. From a normal looking downtown skate park to the bright neon lit streets of Matan, each stage gets bigger and better than the previous one. The game just exudes such personality that it distinguishes itself from other games in the market. It adds to the immersion and gives the game an excuse to have an abundance of rails to grind on and obstacles to overcome. It would be hard to rate a game that's succeeding Jet Set Radio without talking about the OST. Luckily, Bomber Cyberfunk soundtrack is nothing short of amazing. True to its name, the game's music brings out the funk you would expect it to, ranging from groovy hip-hop to electro-pop music. All of it incredible tunes as you ride, skate, and grind throughout the world. However, it does lack many things you would expect from a game, especially at its $39.99 price point. For one, the voice acting is limited to character vocalizations. Characters would do some one-liners to compensate for minimal voiceovers and cutscenes. <clears throat> nah. Combine this with the lack of facial expressions, and then it just becomes awkward at times, especially on more serious story segments. There's also a complete lack of engaging sound effects for combat, and its music, though wonderful, isn't humorous enough to encompass more than just scenario themes. For example, some of the cutscenes would just have zero background music, removing any opportunity of building tension. Mm -hmm. However, the game still overall sounds great. Majority of the time, you'll be grinding and performing tricks, all while your character is hyping up as you perform these insane moves. And Bomber Cyberfunk nails it in this aspect. If you're a fan of skateboarding games, then Bomb Rush Cyberfunk's $39.99 price tag is definitely worth it. Having a decent story on top of great gameplay, audio, and amazing visuals shouldn't be worth considering otherwise. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is an amazing product of love and nostalgia, considered as the spiritual successor of Jet Set Radio. But despite emulating the cult classic, it still manages to set itself apart with its theme and much better gameplay experience compared to the original. For that, we're giving Bomb Rush Cyberfunk a 7.8, as it's easily one of the best indie games this year. 